welcome to the How Not to Screw Up Your Kids podcast, the bucket emptying episodes. So, pour yourself a cuppa, find a comfy seat and enjoy the conversation. I'm your host, Dr. Mary Han, psychologist and parenting expert. And today's bucket emptying question is a general question around how do we help and support children when it comes to managing change? So that change might be something big like changing schools, maybe as parents you're divorcing, you're moving house, something like that which is really big or it might be something small, it might be someone else is picking them up from school or they're going to somebody else's house after school or they're having a sleepover or you're redecorating or you're changing bedrooms. So some children find change profoundly difficult and that can be really small changes whereas others can cope with the small changes but find the bigger changes. So I'm going to talk you through three sort of general principles which are helpful across all of them. So the first one is around acknowledging the fear, acknowledging the emotion behind that change for your child and how it makes them feel. Because what we've got to remember is the feelings that our children have, the anxieties or the fears that they might have around change or the nervousness that they have is legitimate it's it's how they're feeling and we we mustn't ever try and diminish that by saying there's really nothing to worry about you're making a big drama or there's nothing you know this is silly you shouldn't be getting nervous about that it's your grandparents or it's this i think we really have to kind of take it from that position of all right to you this feels huge it may not feel huge to us in fact to us it feels particularly trivial or we may be thinking no idea why they're making reacting over this change so much because they can cope with these other things so it's really it's that acknowledgement and really trying to help them unpick and understand and articulate the feelings that they have around it let's talk about a small change someone else picking them up maybe from school maybe they're really used to and they really love you picking them up from school but someone else is going to pick them up or they're going to be taken to a party by a, by a different parent so the acknowledgement around it is really the case of you know it's acknowledging i can see that you're feeling a bit nervous maybe it probably feels a bit strange doesn't it because you don't know this parent or you're so used to me picking you up or whatever that might be that they that they might be feeling is is help to try and articulate it now you've got to do it on the basis of a, of a reasonable guess you're not going to mess necessarily be a hundred percent accurate but you know your child enough to know it you know have i got a child who's struggling with change because i always pick them up and actually it's this whole idea about going in someone else's car with somebody else and being taken somewhere new and so that they've got that or is it actually much more around a separation the reason why they're feeling nervous about this change is because they really struggle struggle with that separation anxiety so you know it's that first thing is that we need to really understand really help them try and label their emotions and to acknowledge how it feels for them the one of the best ways of doing that i'm saying this with love we have to really listen to our children uh, you know the whole added say adage sort of saying that we always say to children is like you know you've got two ears for listening and one for talking so it's that we should be doing it in that ratio but quite often as parents we're not doing it and we really need to listen and there's a difference between listening to understand and just listening and listening to understand is the kind of listening that we do where we will paraphrase back to our child. So if I'm right, am I right in thinking then that what you're saying is you feel really nervous about being picked up by someone else because you just you feel nervous about the unknown. This is somebody you've never met before. You don't know if you're going to be able to have a conversation with them. It won't feel quite the same as when I pick you up. So it's really listening to be able to repeat back in a rough paraphrase what you think they're feeling and then they can either correct or say yeah that's exactly what I'm saying so that's the first thing that we really need to do the second thing is about giving them as much possible notice as is possible now sometimes change happens and we have no notice and they, we all need to roll with it and it can be particularly challenging but there are often changes where we've got reasonable amount of notice that we can communicate that in advance. So the, the idea around giving our children notice is we're giving them the opportunity to begin to prepare for that change. Now, often we'll do that 
with the bigger changes, we'll often prepare a child because they're moving on school wise and then we'll, we'll do that. But it's the smaller things that we sometimes forget. And sometimes what we do is if we know that we've got a child who struggles with change, we maybe sort of avoid having that conversation because we think, we're, you know, this child doesn't like change. It's always going to be difficult and challenging. So do you know what? I'm just going to leave it right until the last minute. And rather than having a week or two weeks of them getting upset and distressed and constantly needing reassurance, I literally get a day. And I can see that there's some logic in that. But remember, we're working with the end in mind. We're raising resilient adults. And part of that resilient adults is helping our children equip themselves with our help to be able to manage change because life is full of change. And so leaving it to the last minute because that's just easier on everyone is not a long-term successful goal. Now, it may well be you've got a child who is really supremely anxious and change is really difficult and there's lots of change that often happens at home. Maybe you've got a partner who's working shift work and so things are constantly changing and they really struggle to adapt to that. Then you probably want to do a mixture. You know, if it becomes so overwhelming and the spillover onto the family is quite big, but I really would would discourage you from taking that quick win of, do you know what, I'm just going to leave it till the day before because then I don't have lots of of, uh, worries and play the longer game of, okay, I know it's going to be difficult by giving them this much advance notice, but what I'm equipping them with is helping them through that process of acknowledging how they feel and helping them label their emotions and that kind of being able to articulate that and then coming up with a plan because I've given them plenty of time and we've talked through how best to prepare that. So you've got, so those are two. And then the third is all about giving your child any extra information that they may need to prepare for that. So for example, if we've got a child who struggles with change and maybe there's an imminent separation with your partner and a divorce in place, then it's about arming them with the information about what that might look like. So as much information as you can give them, you know, the fact that they're potentially going to be spending time across two homes, you know, all of the information they might need about whether they've got a bedroom in each home or whether they're sharing it, where those two homes may be, how often they might move between the two. It's, you know, we're really looking at as much information. So if we're talking about next schools and it's that the bigger change, it's then talking around what that might look like, where it is, how they might get there, how they might, what their school day might look like in terms of start and finish. If it's smaller things, for example, they're being picked up by somebody else or they're, they're doing a different activity or you're, you're changing a small aspect of their life. It's just asking yourself that the question of, Is there any more information that I can give them that will help them? Because if you don't give them the information, your child will create their own narrative, which more often than not is vastly incorrect. So they create all sorts of narratives um, that then actually create more anxiety. So it is much better to be as open as we possibly can with our children, to give them as much information, to give them as much time and preparation and as much as we can around that that kind of acknowledgement of their feelings and being able to label these sensations that are happening within them so that they're much better able to cope. Now, some children will become adults who are really capable of change. In fact, maybe they thrive on change, that whole you know, pinging from different things is something that gives them a massive buzz. And for others, there will be adults who were, didn't like change as a child and still don't like change as an adult. Part of that is also an acknowledgement of just your child's temperament and personality. Not everybody is going to be really comfortable with change. But what we're trying to do is prepare our children to be able to successfully negotiate and manage situations where change is involved because it's part of a life skill. Now, I hope those three techniques are going to be really helpful. There's always change happening. And even, you know, if you're listening to this episode as it as it releases, we're probably not very far away from a big festive event. And that brings with it a huge amount of change in routine, change of people that might be around, change of location. So hopefully it'll be really helpful for that, but also across the entire year. 
If you have found the episode helpful, I would be so grateful if you could follow, rate and review this podcast so that others can find us and we can spread the love. So until next time.